Welcome to ECTV Live. I'm Rusty Fender. David DeCosmo out this week uh, due to an illness. Uh, his uh, wife uh, uh, had a, a slight bout with the flu. Oh, no. uh, Leona, yeah, a couple of uh, weeks ago, I think David picked up a, a nagging cough from that. So we'll see David back here soon on the program. Uh, joining us uh, today, of course, a recurring guest on this show, Sarah Donahue. Sarah's in charge of the Pittston St. Patrick's Parade. And not the St. Patrick's Day, but the St. Patrick's Parade. And we make note of that every single year. <laughs> every year you do, and I appreciate that. And welcome back. Because it is the St. Patrick's Parade. We are on March 3rd, so we're not even remotely near the day itself. So we are the St. Patrick's Parade. That is correct. And you're a teacher. I am. So at, I'm off today. Uh, at Very the Martin, excited. Uh, the Martin Matei. Martin L. Matei Middle School. On New Pittston Street. Area. Yeah, not too yep. far from me, Pittston area. We are Pittston area graduates. Yes. And uh, unlike Mark, who's a Wyoming area graduate, uh, there was the rivalry <laughs> back when they still had Thanksgiving Day football, football game, games. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You're uh, right. When I, I graduated in 74 there, and that was like the biggest thing. It was. Oh, next to the second coming. Of, well, it's incredible. still a big rivalry. Yes, it is. In any sport, in any anything that Pittston area is pitted against Wyoming area. But it's nice. It keeps it healthy and fun. You're in the hottest town in the area right now. Pittston, I like to think so. Pennsylvania. <laughs> it's the truth. It, How many years now for the St. Patrick's? This is our fifth annual. I can't believe it. It's it's a big one for us there, here in Pittston. It's and, our fifth and, annual and, parade. And you know, not to be patronizing, but for the first one mm -hmm. was record breaking. It was. The, the first the, one. The weather cooperated though, so you had a little boost on things that you, you, you couldn't count on. So yes. very lucky on that deal. So we had this idea to put the parade together and we very luckily got some great weather that day. And I think that had we maybe not had such great weather for that first one, who knows what have what could have happened years after that. But we had a wonderful first parade. It was filled with people. Everybody was happy. We've had no issues, thank goodness, over the years. And we've had some cold parades the last couple years, which has, I think, hurt us a little bit. But this year is going to be beautiful. Oh, I know yeah, it. We're the, due for our fifth the, annual. It's the Ides of March, and it's uh, St. Patrick's Day can bring yes. 55 degrees and a <laughs> snowstorm <laughs> on could. each end of the spectrum. So I it's know. a very iffy time. You know, it's funny that. because, like, last year we had the parade on the 4th, and then we had the blizzard two weeks later. And how much we talked about, thank goodness, this ha didn't happen for parade time, even though it was cold, yeah. it at least was yeah. dry. The, the real problem is when you <laughs> start out on your first, the, the, the first parade mm -hmm. and it bombs, Yes. Then you have another year of indecision know, right? to think of, okay, did the weather kill was us? The weather, was it the advertising? Yeah, it's like, oh what gosh. Right. Then the second time, then you'll know where it's headed or yep. not headed at that yep. point. But you came out of the box number one last time. And again, Pittston is a world-class city. We talk of, Dave and I talk about this all yep. the time on this program. It is mm -hmm. a, it is a, a, it's a thrill to drive through the downtown compared to when, you know, back in the 70s when I was growing up, it was mm -hmm. a, it was a burned out shell. Yep. Like a lot of small towns were, were burned out buildings, you know, yes. empty parking lots. Lots of fires. Yeah, mm -hmm. lots of fires, you know, from, from the Boren Casey at the corner of William yep. Street way before your Awful. time, but you know, all the way down mm -hmm. the street, uh, just, uh, just a, a, a plethora of, of fires and empty lots and all that. Right. But the comeback with awesome. the period lighting and the cobblestone walkways Sidewalks. and the yeah. businesses. It's the businesses. And yep. now now with the college moving into the downtown. That's very exciting. Like, what next? Yeah, you gotta well, be you gotta be thrilled. It's gotta be an easy an easy parade to sell. It really is an easy parade to sell for us just because we are finally coming back in Pittston and just like everything you talked about, now we have Mayor Mike Lombardo back at the helm again, who was our mayor a number of years ago. Now he's back and he's um, really rejuvenated and ready to go. And I think there's going to be even a lot of new businesses coming into town very soon, things that should be announced forthcoming. And it's just really, it's a great town to live in. I live downtown. I love living downtown. I walk to a lot of places, which is awesome. And when you come to Pittston and you come to our parade, you could really just celebrate and enjoy the town, enjoy the artwork, enjoy the businesses. And we wouldn't have been able to have a parade a number of years ago like this, the St. Patrick's Parade, because there wouldn't be any restaurants, bars, businesses to go to. But now we have it. So now we can have a parade and celebrate the beautiful town that we're a part of. Hey, you're right. The tomato bar is always in the forefront of, yeah. of the area. And of course, if it's based on how loud they are, they are the number one <laughs> venue on that day and a lot of other days. Yep. But you know, Sarah, it, it is true that, 
that the, the bottom line is, and you mentioned this, that, that Lombardo, who's a regular guest on this show, mm -hmm. and the entire folks, including yourself, are just mm -hmm. so into the town. Yep. My, my father had a saying, if you can't get out of it, get into it. Get into it. That was it. a great, so, and you're just <laughs> so into the town that it's actually contagious, and that's a it wonderful is. thing. It's a little bit like the Hotel California. You yeah, can, you can, you can never leave. check out, but you can never leave. That's, <laughs> no, I think we're, we're exactly there right. for life. Yeah. And I joined the Tomato Fest Committee when I was back in college in the early 2000s, so I've been around and I've been helping since then, and now it's 2018, so like the Hotel California, I'm never going <laughs> anywhere, well, I think. you can check out, but you'll never leave, you probably. Never leave. <laughs> so tell us about the parade this year. So the parade this year, our fifth annual, we have a couple really exciting things. First of all, um, this coming Friday, weather permitting, we are going to be lining our parade route. And most towns and events, when they line the parade route, they literally just line the route. Well, not in Pittston. We like to do things big. So we are going to have Mayo Striping, who donates the paint for us. All the time. Very good friends. Yeah, very good people. They dress up as <coughs> leprechauns, and they're going to line the route as leprechauns down Main Street. Not only that, we are going to have Butch from the Wyoming Valley Pipe and Drum Band. We love Butch, he's a great friend to the committee. He's going to lead the lining while playing his bagpipe. So Friday the 23rd, tentatively, weather permitting, we will have that happen about five o'clock at night. Between like 4.30 and five, we're gonna get that set up. So if you wanna come out and see that on Friday night, see the parade before the parade, um, the leprechauns will be lining the route and Butch will be leading it and it should be pretty eventful. We did it last year and it was really quite the spectacle to see. You guys are masters it of promotion. Not only, I mean, the, so gre much fun. the green line would be enough in enough. most communities, oh, no, no, but no, now no. you have leprechauns, leprechauns doing the green it. line. Like, is there no end no, to this madness of publicity and promotion? We just like to have a lot of fun, if you haven't noticed. So that was something that we made into an event last year when normally they would just come line the route at any given time and cause a lot of traffic snafus and anger everybody but this year at least it's a spectacle and like last year too so come see the leprechauns coming down the street and butch playing the bagpipe and it's should be pretty fun so well, that's weather permitting at this point well you know today as they say today is president's day and, yes. and usually this is the this is the turning point for weather now i i went on Let's record hope. saying that this was going to be the <laughs> third mildest winter in the history of of weather keeping because yes. the last two were the two mildest winters but mm. i was really wrong this year <laughs> this has been just I can't, I I know, can't even believe waking up every morning it's either plus eight plus six plus five right and snow and the snow first and ice. the first six of the first eight days of february <laughs> there was snow that in itself right. broke a record it's six. Been awful. so so i think now we're at the turning point or certainly certainly hoping Hopefully. that we're at the turning point Please. to some good weather for march but again such an iffy day but you know mm. it, it goes on Rain, snow, shine, or we, leprechauns. It's the way the thing is. That, you know? We will have it. It has to be some pretty bad weather for us to move it. So we plan on going forth on the 3rd, hopefully. And I think we're due for good weather this year. Like I said, I know we're going to have a beautiful day. I know it. You had good weather every year. It's just we have. Was, uh, it's just been a little, a little cold. cold. But yeah. yeah, it was great. But at least great it's been weather. dry. Thankfully, we haven't had any major snowstorms, any rain. We can handle the colds, although I'd like it to be a little bit warmer. Our first year was just like a 45 degree. I think it was warmer than that because I walked sunny, downtown that day. day. I think it was I think it was on 50 degrees, yeah. and that was 11 o'clock in the morning. So it even got better yep. from that point on. So truly amazing. We'll see. So what are some of the highlights this year, Sarah? Okay, so that's Friday, the 23rd. Uh, Saturday, the 24th, this coming Saturday, we are going to have something new this year. We're having a Little Miss, Little Mr. Pittston Leprechaun Contest. And that is the first year for that. It's our inaugural contest. We're mimicking it much after the Little Miss, Little Mr. Tomato Contest that we have during the Tomato Festival. It's for ages three to seven years old. You can still register if you'd like to, even that day at the library. We're having it at the Pittston Memorial Library. The kids will be asked a couple questions. There will be a winner for each, and they can ride in the parade. The right following on Broad Street, Saturday. the library, by the yeah, way. Yeah, library yes. on Broad Street. And come for about 1 o'clock to check in. The pageant, or not a pageant, the contest is going to start at about 1.30. Ask, ask the kids a couple questions. Hopefully get some laughs. Don't dress anything crazy, just casual attire, something green perhaps. It's like, like I said, it's not a pageant, it's just a contest. So nothing crazy. And every child will get a little shamrock necklace at least and some others will win and get a trophy and a sash and then ride in the parade so it should be kind of fun something cute to see keeping the leprechaun theme yes That's keeping right. the leprechaun Good. theme little miss little mr mm -hmm. leprechaun of pittston and we love the tomato fest contest so we're not reinventing the wheel it's going to be the same basis for judging for points all of that 
we think it works. It's worked for a number of years, so no need to reinvent the wheel. We're just going to celebrate it in a different season. I think a, people, a lot of people miss the point, too, that to get a parade of this, of this size and of this now popularity, mm -hmm. you have to correlate with the other towns, too. Of course, you, and, yes. And that's the good thing, that you never want to steal anybody else's thunder no. with the Scranton uh, and, of course, the Wilkes-Barre Wilkes Parade. So this was, a, this was a good thing, but a lot of work goes into the planning of this as well, Sarah. Oh, yes. There's lots of work in the planning. And, and obviously, we don't want to step on anyone's toes. And even going to, into the first year, not only do we not want to step on toes, there's only so many bagpipe groups to go around and groups that want to be in both parades. So right. why would we have it on the same day and split those? That's exactly. unfair to both yeah, parades and right. both towns and all the people that want to come out and see. And I personally like being the first one because I think at this point in February now, people are done with winter, done with the cold, looking for signs of spring, which I think the St. Patrick's Parade is. And so being the first, everybody's like, yes, finally, a St. Patrick's right. Parade. Let's go. Let's, right. let's get out and go see it. So I, I really like being the first one, actually. Well, last week was in the 40s for the most part. Now yep. I think we're getting into milder weather. You know, now yes. this week's President's Day weekend mm -hmm. coming up. I think it can only get better, although we had that blizzard. You know, that, that was just unbelievable. It was, was so crazy. close yep. that you got that parade in. Yes. And then the second blizzard almost to the day <sighs> of the one in the 90s. Was right. Just Very They ironic. say that history does repeat, repeat itself, itself, and it's true. It does. It really yep. does. So how do we avoid that? that? That's the deal with, with, the, with the parade this year. And, of course, it starts at... The parade yes, starts at noon. noon. It starts at noon on the on March third, and this year we have about the same amount of groups as last year. We have four pipe and drum band groups. We have the Wiener Mobile coming back. Oscar Very Meyer. Very excited. Yep, yes, absolutely. We had them a couple years ago, and that was a big draw for people. And it was really just hysterical coming down Main Street, seeing the gigantic Wiener oh, Mobile, I love the Wiener -Mobile. <laughs> the big hot dog in the bun. Absolutely. So that was fun. We also actually have the. Um, NYPD Emerald Society Pipe and Drums coming this year too. So that's a new band for us and a very big prominent band out of New York City, the New York City um, Police Department Emerald Society. So they have about 50 pipers and drummers and you coming. Are, you already made reservations for oh, these yes. folks, so you're right at the ground floor of getting these people checked in and booked in. And booked in, yep. I, in the fall, sent a number of requests out to a number of groups, a number of the New York City ones, a number of the Philadelphia ones, all of the Emerald Society, the fire, the police, sanitation department, just seeing if anybody would respond and be interested in coming to Pittston. Did you have and multiple people respond? No, they're the only ones. Is that a fact? Yeah. Well, you know, it's a tough booking time, too, like you said. I mean, you know. And they have parades that they're committed to too already, sure. I'm sure. So I think it was um, the first couple of days of January, I got an email from the bandmaster of the NYPD saying, we saw your request. We're interested in coming to Pittston. Do you want to still have us? And I looked at my phone and said, yes, absolutely. So I spoke to him the following day and we've been making arrangements to get them here. A lot of logistics with um, hotel rooms and a bus sure. to get them here. There's sure. a lot to do to bring this band to Pittston, but we're very excited that a group of that caliber wants to come to our town. You're also in a tough spot, too, because as we just mentioned, you're between the Scranton and Wilkes-Barre parades, yes. but again, you have a finite window to do the St. Patrick's Parade because right. you can't have this on Memorial Day. No. I mean, that's available. But Although you the weather might be awesome. Well, the <laughs> weather might be more awesome, but it's like you have a very small window to, to get, get this in. parade in. Yeah, So right. the, the people don't count on those logistics as well, Sarah. You are so right about that. So I'm thrilled that they reached out of all that I had reached out to in the fall, that they wrote back and they're coming to Pittston. So I'm excited to meet them, excited to hear their music. I know they have a CD on iTunes. I listen to it. So... They're the real deal. We're very excited. Now, the parade route will follow, I take it, the original route, yes. which will start on South Main at the Fork in the Road. Yes. And then we'll head, it'll head north on Main. North on Main, yep. And then make a U-turn at the Fort Jenkins Bridge. That'll be the yes. concrete bridge. Correct. And then down Kennedy Boulevard, because that's great. You not only have both sides of the street, you have yep. both sides mm -hmm. of two avenues. Two avenues, yeah, Main so Street and Kennedy Boulevard. So it's wonderful, and Boulevard. back down toward the, with mm -hmm. the newly reconstructed Columbus statue. Too. Correct, Columbus is that's back. That's a story in itself. Oh, my goodness, that was a crazy <laughs> night. Well, but Columbus is back. We rededicated him in the fall or on Columbus Day. So he's back, and he's very excited to see another St. Patrick's Parade since he missed it last year. But he came back right before the Tomato Festival Parade, so he did see that parade. And now he'll be back, and he's taller and more beautiful than ever. And more protected. And more protected than ever, yes. It's amazing. It's like there's... there's 
there's two miles of collected <laughs> roadways and people will find the one item um, I, to hit. When I saw that, that photo, it's it was incredible. incredible. It really is. It's really unbelievable. Nothing to laugh at. No. It's really funny. No, no, no. There Talk was no laughing this. until we all made sure that no. the people in the vehicle were okay. No, but no. Um, it was just an incredible photo to see when, when I saw it. You get a lot of kudos uh, in, in the Pittston Parade because, and again, no offense to anyone else, but it's not 15 hours long like no. the Scranton Parade no. <laughs> used to be right. years back so you get right down to the nitty-gritty yes. and this is just the facts ma'am just the facts and I I think the parade the last couple of years has moved extra fast just because it's been cold and people don't necessarily want to hang out and shake hands with people along yeah, the route when you have to get there an hour and a half right. ahead of time you're already exactly. there you're already and a half cold. to get good to get good exactly. seats right like the first year I think it really moved a lot slower because it was warm so people that were walking along the route would stop and shake hands how are you what's going on how you doing I haven't seen you in so long that kind of thing but the last couple of years it was like poof, right down the road there was waving as people are <laughs> going by because it's been cold so I think the parade itself is really it's really an alive kind of thing because you don't, you don't really know how fast it's going to go. It's all based on the people in the parade and how I make the lineup and how I put the groups where they go and, and the weather, obviously, I really think has a lot to do with how fast it moves. Really and, more than anything, to be honest. And how the, fast the people in the parade want the parade to move. And the choreography, <laughs> Sarah, too, is, yes. is a logistical uh, uh, force to be reckoned with as well yes. because you can't have oh. three high school bands back to back or the no. music will cancel each other out. Yes. So you have to have this this yes. divided area. It There's a lot to this. There, It's a Rubik's Cube, I'm sure, is easier than putting I'm a, sure a lineup together just because, like you said, you can't have the too many musics next to each other. Exactly. Not only live music, but a lot of groups have recorded music. Exactly. So you can't have recorded music next to another recorded music or live music and I do ask on the application to indicate do you have music in your vehicle or your group so I know when making the lineup to not put the musics next to each other which is hard because there's a lot of music which is great we love music we, love, we want to have a lot of music but that's one consideration animal groups don't want to be too far back they don't want to put extra miles on the pause of course which I appreciate oh, little kid never groups thought of that. don't want to be super far back um, you know, sponsors we obviously give preference to as well. Of course. So there's a lot of factors in putting a lineup together. It is absolutely an incredible thing to try to do. And I just sit and stare at my Excel document and I'm moving things around and it's it's really not easy to do. Speaking of sponsors, we have to stroke the sponsors. Who are in charge of the, some of the sponsors this year for the parade? Um, Times Leaders, our media mm -hmm. sponsor this year. Like I said, Mayo Striping donates the paint for us. SPC has always been very good to us. Um, Lamar Advertising giving us a billboard, billboards. which is really, yeah. really helpful. Riley and Associates. There are a lot of money, Riley. Why, uh, Wesley Village, United Methodist Homes. How about that? Yep. Our, our major sponsors And Riley, year. the surveying uh, crew, the yes. environmental. They've yeah. always been very good to us since the first parade. They were actually one, one of our first donations, <laughs> so they've always been very supportive. Um, going back to that first parade when a lot of people were not necessarily believing that we could pull this off or do this and they were one of the first to actually write a check out to us and say here start doing what you need to do to well, make this parade happen. You know you mentioned that but I think on the heels uh, as you mentioned about and now on the board of the Tomato Festival. I mm -hmm. don't know if there are a lot of naysayers on that. I think the I think that folks that if Pittston is going to put on a parade, I think they're going to do 100% and do their best. I don't know about the naysayers on that because the Tomato Festival is it's been going on now since the early 1980s, and that it is a, that's a world class it is event now to be reckoned with. Yep. It's, it's unbelievable, it really mm -hmm. is. From you know a little tiny a little tiny stand which was in the parking lot it was behind the Burger, Burger King. King. Yeah, yep. you know to to, to mm -hmm. what it is now. I mean, it's truly incredible. But again, when you get a you know a town that comes on and says a Parade. A parade mm -hmm. is not like opening up a kiosk and selling hot dogs. No. This, this is a huge deal, and it is. you're contingent upon a lot of folks that are coming yes. in from out of the area. That's the problem. Absolutely, and we appreciate people coming in from out of the area to see our beautiful downtown and see our wonderful parade. But um, we even have more things on parade day. We have mass at 9 o'clock in the morning. I meant to say, that's right. And yeah. new pastor and now, good friend of mine, the uh, Joe Elston. Elston. Absolutely. Yes. Joe Elston's mm -hmm. the greatest. He was at Holy Rosary in Duryea yes, for a while. Sacred that's right. Heart. He is the best, and he'll, he's very he'll nice. put humor and cordiality into that mass as well. He's great to be at St. John's. That's so funny. When I had, we had always had it with Monsignor Bindick, right. obviously, who we love very dearly on our committee. He's been very good to us. And so when I had reached out to Monsignor Bindick, asking for information on Father Elston to schedule a meeting to set up mass, it was so funny because uh, Monsignor Bindick had made some comment about, I'm sure Father Elston will be happy to host your mass because... Um, 
he's a fine Irish gentleman or something cute like that. So he was very appreciative that we want to have mass there, and that's at 9 o'clock in the morning, and that's the same as always. I think it's a really nice way to start the day. It is. I and really do. Scranton does the same thing at the yes. cathedral. One thing about Elston, and I know him for decades, he is the best extemporaneous off-the-cuff speaker. He Which, does everything mm -hmm. without notes, and he yep. is jovial, and he is just a wonderful speaker. He will mm -hmm. enthrall the crowd at the parade. Yeah. So once again, Sarah, let's recap the day and okay. the date and the time. All right. Well, a couple more things. Yeah. We yes. also have the Leprechaun Loop, which is yes. our one mile run walk on parade day at 11 o'clock in the morning. And that should be something fun to see because we encourage people to dress in costumes. You could still register for that. You could register that morning at the YMCA. So that's a really nice element of our parade day. So parade day is mass at nine, Leprechaun Loop at 11, and then the parade itself is at noon. And that's a busy day. And then this Friday. This Friday is the line painting. The striping, correct. The striping with the leprechauns and Butch from Miami Valley Pipe and Drum Band. Saturday at 1.30 is our Little Miss Little Mister contest. And actually, I didn't talk about our pub crawl, which is another really oh, yes, fun that, element that's of right. the parade itself, right. too. So on Saturday night, Saturday the 24th, we are starting at 5 o'clock at the Knights of Columbus. And we go to four bars for an hour apiece with the Wyoming Valley Pipe and Drum Band. They'll play two sets at every bar. And that is such a fun, magical night. You don't even need to want to participate in drinking alcohol to have a good time. If you're not a drinker by any means or don't want to, that's fine. Come hang out in those bars and just hear the beautiful music, two sets in every bar. So we'll start at the nights at 5 o'clock. We'll be at Tomato Bar for 6.15 to 7.15. Then we're going to go to the Red Mill for um, 7.30. Right on South Main. Yep, right That's on correct. South Main South Street, Main. the Red Mill. And then we'll finish the night at Brews Brothers at 8.45. So we'll be at those bars for one hour with the pipe and drum band and our committee and a lot of our friends. We have t-shirts that we're wearing, much bright orange t-shirts, so we'll stand out. And that's just such a fun night. That's really a good time. So that Saturday, this Saturday before the parade is actually somewhat busier than like parade day, it seems like. So we've really made the parade like this two week long. Yeah, from, <laughs> and, and yet from Bruce Brothers, which is yes. at the uh, base of the of the Eighth Street Bridge in Jenkins Township, yes. all the way to the end of town, you cover you encompass a big area. So that's yep. a wonderful thing. We we liked we like those bars. We went to those bars last year. The owners are very good to us. Very appreciative that we're coming there with the Wy with the Wyoming Valley Pipe and Drum Band, who loves the night as well. They love playing their beautiful music. And like I said, they'll play two sets. Once we get there, they'll take a little break. They'll play again before we leave. The music is just so beautiful to hear. If you like Irish music like that, bagpipe music, pipe and drum music, Celtic. then you should absolutely yeah. come out and enjoy that pub crawl with us. And again, it's there's it's not a drinking event by any means. I know it sounds like it is, like it's a pub crawl, but it's really not. It's just really a celebration of the beautiful music that they play and the camaraderie of pre-parade excitement. You know, you got to look, Sarah, at Pittston, and you got to say, this town is mm -hmm. really beautiful and mm -hmm. you touched upon something I wanted to say for the last but the art murals yes I mean that's that's a that's a big draw yep. in the area it is we and have, more to come from what Lombardo told us there's too. a lot yeah. more to come he's I think nowhere near no. done with with bringing some more art to town and we do have a lot of murals it seems like everywhere you turn a new one's being painted obviously now it's the winter so it's the yes, off season it's of painting murals now. yeah sure but now is the planning time so I don't know what's up his sleeve but I'm sure something really good is and there's just so much beautiful art in town it's everywhere you turn it's just art everywhere and it's really nice and we love we love having a beautiful town to come to, which is why we host a parade of this magnitude because it's just such a nice town to have it in. We're gonna have a college in town. What we are, next? We are, I what know. What next? So LCCC is Buildings that have been available, the old bank forever. What that next? That is huge. I, can't I know, that is huge. I love yeah. saying that we are going to be a college town. That's amazing. Everybody loves college towns. You're right. When I went to Elizabethtown, that was such a college town. Yeah. Everybody in town was so good to the students at college. And every college town is just such a nice little area. Wait till you see the additional pubs and restaurants too that right. will it, they at least will investigate opening Absolutely. in town or when you get a college lunch. satellite center, a Definitely. satellite area from the college. More places time. for lunch, coffee shops. Absolutely. Things that college students want and need essentially when they have a break from classes. Where am I going to go for a little bit? We have to have those options for those students who have maybe like an hour between classes and don't want to necessarily hang out at the building. Well, we have to have somewhere in town, and I know that we will. We have a lot already, and now we'll have a lot more coming soon. So 
I love that we're a college town. That's awesome. I look at several, several different things. You know, working for PennDOT, I look at some of the mm -hmm. engineering that goes on in town as well. And, uh, of course, the revamped area right off of between Broad and William, which, uh, you know, there was a big job on Kennedy Boulevard with the new sidewalks. Yep. Uh, the new area down to River, you know, yes. Riverfront Park, Riverside Park, yep. uh, down under the under the uh, the uh, steel bridge, the uh, the uh, just uh, the Water Street Bridge, Water Street, Fireman's the Water Memorial. Street Bridge, the Fireman's Memorial. Mm -hmm. So that actually took. Uh, shape all the way down as far as uh, the supermarket too with the new sidewalks, the yes. new areas, the new bank that opened up. And we even have, uh, not a lot of people know about the rails to trails behind yes. um, along the river as well, which right is a beautiful Right down to the trail. Knox Mine disaster yes. in and Jenkins even Town. That's correct. And even beyond, it's fenced in. There's one yes. track there now. They took the old track, the second track, yes. and made a walking trail there right is, down to where the Knox collapsed back in January 1959. Very peaceful. Incredible. Very peaceful. I like to go down there. I I've run down there before. It's very, very nice absolutely. down there. Very and I always nice. stop and pause at the Knox Memorial and just say a little prayer for a yep, moment. Yep, absolutely. It's they have a little memorial see. now yep. on the ground that said that the, the folks had uh, passed there, that yep. had died there, and still are entombed in that. But all the way down to the Knox yeah, Mine it's disaster. Always, it's very peaceful to go there and say a little prayer and then continue on my run. That's very nice. So one more time, let's wrap this up. Okay. The time, date, places, and the big oh events. Oh my goodness. All right. So Patrick's. this Friday, 5 o'clock, line painting with leprechauns and uh, Butch from the Wyoming Valley Pipe and Drum Band. Courtesy of Mayo Striping. Courtesy of Mayo Striping. Saturday at 1.30 is our Little Miss, Little Mr. Leprechaun contest at the Pittston Memorial Library. Check in by like 1 o'clock there. 5 o'clock starts our pub crawl. That night, that Saturday, the Saturday night, the 24th, and that is the nights, and then Tomato Bar, Red Mill, and Bruce Brothers all an hour apiece. And finally, we get a little break, <laughs> and then we'll resume the following Saturday, which is our parade day, our fifth annual parade day. Mass at 9 o'clock in the morning at St. John's. The Leprechaun Loop is at 11 o'clock. Registration at the YMCA. And then the parade itself is at noon. And, and like I said, we have about the same amount of entries same route as always, no need to reinvent the wheel. It's worked perfectly for years and it should really be a beautiful day. So we have, you know, it's funny, when we first started planning the parade, it was a parade and now it's a lot it's more than event. a parade. It's an entertainment it's a extravaganza. Line painting, race, pub crawl, parade. I just, I can't even remember it all in my head. It's On incredible. On the week <laughs> when everybody is Irish. Yes, everybody is everybody. Irish. Rusty McFender. Rusty that McFender. <laughs> Mark McMcGlory. Uh, Mark, Mc, Mark McGlory. It kind of works the way I it like is. I like it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it I did. Like I thought that. so too. Everybody's well, Irish. <laughs> you've been a great guest as you always have and you certainly Thank know your you. stuff. Erin Gobra to you. Erin Gobra, we'll, you too. A, a lot of good luck to you too with this year and we'll Thank see you, you back next year. Of course, the St. Patrick's, not day, but the St. Patrick's Parade <laughs> in downtown Pittston. For David DeCosmo, I'm Ooh. Rusty Fender, Mark McGlory. My thanks, of course, our technical guru here and producer of this show. And, of course, to all of you for listening. We'll see you next time right here. Uh, Sarah Donnie, of course, from the St. Patrick's Parade. Thank you again Thank for you being for with us. Thank you for having me. And we'll see you next week right here on ECTV Live.